In the last half hour, we have seen these scenes of intense bombardment in Gaza, going for several minutes, in fact, a month into the deadly war between Israel and Hamas. We are hearing different versions of what post-conflict Gaza could look like. Two of those visions have come from the US and Israel, but they're not aligned on some major points. And what we want to know is how Palestinians in Gaza see their own future. Some rhetoric from Israel's leaders has equated Hamas with the Palestinian people. Take a listen to Israeli President Isaac Herzog speaking in the wake of the Hamas attack. First of all, we have to understand there's a state, there's a state in a way that, was a, that has built a machine of evil right at our doorstep. It's an entire nation out there that is responsible. It's not true. This rhetoric about civilians not, we're not aware, not involved, it's absolutely not true. They could have risen up. They could have fought against that evil regime which took over Gaza. The new polling of Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank completed just before Hamas's attack paints a very different picture. In a study completed on October the 6th, that is one day before the attack, 67% of a small group of Palestinians who were polled in Gaza said they have little or no trust in Hamas. And when asked if they would vote for, in, uh, for Hamas if new elections were to be held, less than a quarter said they would vote for the leader of Hamas. And we should note here, Elections have not been held in the Palestinian terrorists since 2006, almost, of course, 20 years ago. I want to bring in Amani Jamal. She's one of the leaders of the Arab Barometer Project, the organization which conducted this research. She's also the dean of the Princeton School of Public and International Affairs. Amani, thank you very much for taking the time uh, to speak to us. Uh, as we said, we, you have been conducting polls in Gaza for some time. Tell us about the polling you were undertaking before October the 7th and what that revealed, Amani, about Gazans' views on Hamas, their attitudes on Hamas. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Thank you for having me. Uh, what we found is that there was little support for the Hamas government at the eve of the, these atrocities. So about two-thirds of Gazans did not have any trust or little trust even in the Hamas government. That's two thirds of the people of Gaza. While so much is being made about holding the civilians of Gaza, the women and children of Gaza accountable to the atrocities of Hamas, what we find in our poll is that there's little, little evidence to su suggest that there is widespread support for Hamas. To your point, we also found that only a quarter of Palestinians in Gaza, if given the opportunity, would vote for Hamas. And about 72 percent of Gazans believe that there was widespread corruption in the ranks of Hamas before October the 7th. Um, and basically, a large segment of the population believes that Hamas has mismanaged the resources of Gaza as well. So if the if there were to be elections then um, in Gaza, and they haven't been, like we said, a money for 20 years, who, who would they vote for in these elections? Do they have faith in any particular party? Right. Well, so what we see in the polling is that about uh, a plurality has faith in Fetih, though th those numbers are at 30 percent. Um, and and, and th th that's at least something to work with. But remember, you know, the Palestinian political landscape, the pl Palestinian electoral process and uh, the political parties of the Palestinians, at least those political parties at play today. You have Fatih basically and Hamas. Hamas is calling, is still, uh, it, it, it has extremist elements and elements that are calling for the destruction of the state of Israel. You have Fatih, on the other hand, that has denounced terrorism, recognized Israel's right to exist, basically is an extension of the Palestinian Authority, but it lacks legitimacy because the two-state process, the peace process has failed, and the Netanyahu government has done very little to push the peace process forward over the last several years. Yeah, and I think as you're talking, Amani, your, your microphone must have fallen off. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, if you can just put it on, uh, that's fantastic. So we can hear you clearly. And, and what you have outlined, uh, Amani, is that perhaps the, there is little faith in, in neither of these parties. But is there someone who they, they believe can lead Gaza? If you're talking about concerns over 
corruption here, which was the, the initial concerns, is there someone they believe can do this? So, you know, I was listening to the previous speaker, Mr. Olmert, and he, he articulated the key issue here, is that if there are clear goals in place, so, you know, if, if you're going to have elections for Palestinians, to what end? Are you going to have another government in Gaza simply to police Gazans, make sure that they are compliant, make sure that they are caged into this land on Gaza, or is there hope for something better? If there are going to be elections, is that going to lead to a democracy and that democracy, democracy is going to lead to a two-state solution? Otherwise, what is the point of having elections if basically the daily realities, but daily political, economic, and social realities in Gaza are not going to change? And all you're giving are, are the children of Gaza no hope, and then yeah. doctrines like Hamas become that much more attractive to the youth. There has to be a goal. And the, the truth is, we're seeing all this devastation in Gaza. Thousands of people have lost their lives, and we're not sure to what end. After the eradication of Hamas, even if it is er eradicated, what, where, is this, where is all of this going? And there has, you know, the international community has been extremely supportive of Israel's campaign in Gaza, has almost been rather silent on the humanitarian well, crisis that you, is emerging in Gaza? You, you, you heard Mr. Olmert, sorry to interrupt, you heard Mr. Olmert, he was mentioning Palestinian Authority, something that we've heard from the US. How much faith is there on the Palestinian Authority? So there's not much faith today in the Palestinian Authority. Uh, most Palestinians believe the Palestinian Authority is a burden on the people of, of the West Bank in Gaza. But the truth is, the Palestinian Authority has not been able to prove itself. Remember, the Palestinian yeah. Authority was created as an extension of the Oslo Accords, which should have led the negotiations to a two-state solution. The fact is that the Palestinian Authority, which again has not held elections since 2006, has seen under its regime, settlements have expanded in the West Bank, the future Palestinian state has shrunk. The Palestinian Authority has not only been delegitimated de de by its own corruption and its own largesse and its own excesses, it's been delegitimated by a peace process that has produced nothing but enclaves and settlements. So again, what is the purpose of these projects and of these elections if they're not going to lead to the fundamental issue here, which is the underlying issue underlying all of what's going on is the ongoing occupation, the lack of a two-state solution. Nobody in the international community, in the U.S., the Netanyahu government, or the Arab leaders really have pushed for a two-state solution. We, 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 you know, people are moving towards bilateral relationships, but they're forgetting the core issue, which is the ongoing Israeli occupation of the West Bank and Gaza and the need to push forward a two-state solution. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. I found your service absolutely fascinating uh, in terms of giving us some insight into what Gazans want to see and what they're not liking. Uh, this is pre-October the 7th, really important. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak to thank us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you.